to Rambam had said that a person in his life, all our involvements should be with one perspective to live responsibly with purpose. We eat, we eat what's healthy, not what's sweet to the palate, such as a dog or a, a donkey. It eats things which it just gravitates and eats it with a gusto, whatever it eats. Edible, inedible. And you should only cohabit, only not be, to become indulgent in that activity, but for, for health reasons. A person sometimes has to release that desire to expel semen from the body to be healthy or to have children. Whatever we do, we do to be healthy. And if you're healthy, he concludes, and he says, and even to drink things which are necessarily sweet but bitter, because it's healthy. And he writes now, a person who conducts his life based on it conforms with the healing process, health, and your focus is that your physicality, your body, and your limbs should be fully functional. And the children you have should engage to assist you in your work. And they work for the family, like in the olden days. Enzo derech tova. If the one's focus is purely for the physicality, I have children to work on the farm because I'm not able to do myself. If I could have my own, why have strangers? And so on and so forth. That's not the, that's not the emphasis. That's not the focus. You want your body to be strong, complete, and strong. Kedeshit. That your nefesh, your soul, your spirit should be focused to be able to understand God. This we mentioned yesterday. He says, it is impossible to understand and delve and reflect on wisdom if you're hungry. Why? If you're hungry, you're distracted. Hunger is an indication. You know, when the when the battery starts running low, things start, the light starts dimming. You cannot, if you're hungry, he says you cannot understand and grasp wisdom. And if you're not well, if you're not well, you're not fully functional. You don't have that energy. Oh, for one of your limbs actually are in pain. You're suffering from pain. But of course, all this is due to your living not responsibly. Sometimes a person's predicament, he reaches a certain age, you have certain aches and pains. You have arthritis. One's limbs, joints start actually aging. You have difficulty walking. And this continuous pain. That continuous pain is a distraction. You cannot come upon wisdom and understanding and reflection, if you're distracted with, due to being hungry, or not well, or even a limb, which is non-functional or in pain, this is all distraction. And you should try to have a child, a son, and mentor him, because you never know, he may become a leading Torah sage. You never know. A person with this perspective throughout his whole life, I want to be healthy, why? I want to be hydrated, why? I want to be rested, why? I want to be relaxed, why? 
I want to have children. Why? And the answer is the same answer. To be fully functional, to be able to serve God better. To have the clarity, to have all the takeaways, which the pr appropriate takeaways. That's my, that's my perspective. That's the focus. A person who has this mindset, Oev, that person's considered serving God continuously. When you sleep, when you eat, when you cohabit, when you relax, when you vacation, if that is the objective and that is the perspective, that person, every moment of his life is fully invested in serving God. Even when he's engaged in business, he's in, in a negotiation situation. Why am I negotiating to succeed financially? For the same reason. It's only with that same perspective. I feel boil, even when he's engaged in a sexual act with his wife. What is what is the objective? To be indulgent like an animal or to fulfill the myths of procreation? Because maybe God will endow me with a child that will be that special child, or to fulfill the mitzvah of, of your conjugal obligation to your wife. Because the mindset is regarding every aspect of your life that you find through your actions and your activities. The perspective is I want to be fully functional and healthy and vibrant and have whatever it is purely for the sake to serve Hashem. Only for that reason. Even when you sleep. You're sleeping and only so your mind should be fully at ease and settled. And you sleep sufficiently that you shouldn't become vulnerable to illness. To maintain your immune system. Because you can't serve God if you're not well, if you're sick. If that's the case, if you sleep with that intent, to sleep well and not be compromised health-wise, because you want to, again, function to serve God at your best level, sleep is serving God. Sleep is a mitzvah. The story many years ago, Ryalkov Kamenetsky, Zetzar Rocho, blessed man, was one of the leading Torah sages. He was a contemporary of Rosha Feinstein, a blessed memory. And he was he was slightly overweight. Maybe he had some high blood pressure. He goes to the doctor. The doctor says he'd have to take off, take off 30 pounds. And um, he was a man who wore a frock. And he wore a at Hamburg, the way a person of his status in his capacity, the way he would dress. And he comes to the doctor six weeks later. He walks in, he looks haggard. His frock is hanging on him. Looks like it's about two sizes too large. And he looks haggard. His shirt, you can put your fist between his neck and, 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 and the shirt collar. The doctor says, what happened? You look like you're not well. He says, why? He says, he lost so much weight. He says, but didn't the doctor say I should take off 30 pounds? I took 30 pounds. He says, this is the first time it's ever happened. When I tell a patient to go 30 pounds, if he takes off five pounds, it's quite a bit. He says, what do you mean? I have an obligation to listen to the doctor because my health is, is vital and crucial to serve God pr appropriately. Otherwise, I can't. So if that's what you tell me I have to do, I do it. Like doing anything else. I do a mitzvah, that's a mitzvah. That, that's what he said to the doctor. That's how seriously he took it. Because again, all aspects of his life were fully invested in this with, the, with this perspective. And regarding this concept, this perspective, the rabbis taught us, all your actions, does it all your mitzvahs? All the mitzvahs you do should be for the sake of God. It says all your actions, all your endeavors. I'll give you an example. You sell newspapers. You get up five 
in the morning as a teenager, sell newspapers, and you have that newspaper a- apron, and you're selling the Daily Mirror, the American Telegram, and you, you make a nickel on a paper, and you're only getting a penny per paper, but you're earning that living to be able to afford breakfast, to be able to pay your tuition, help your parents pay your tuition in school. So why is he getting up? He's interested in selling papers. The paper is only a means to earn that penny per paper to be able to afford what you have to afford as a Jew, to be an observant Jew. So that every moment calling out, that's all mitzvah. Because he's only doing it for the, for the same with the same perspective. It's a famous story to tell over the Gera Rebbe. There was a sect. There was a, a dynasty called Ger because they came from a city in Europe, Poland, called Ger. It was one of the largest Hasidic groups. And the leading rabbis of this these groups, of this group, were, were very holy people. They were Kabbalists. And the city they were in, in Poland was Ger. That was the name of this city, Ger. And the Rebbe, the Hasidic rabbi, the head of the dynasty, takes a large apple, which was crisp, which was looked very quality, and he says a blessing. And he bites into the apple. A Hasid sees the rabbi, the holy rabbi doing that. He also he takes her apple, says the blessing with focusing the intent, and also bites into the apple, one of his own apples. And the rabbi sees this, this chosid mimicking his behavior. So he calls him over, he says, I want to explain you something. When I ate that apple, I didn't eat the apple because I wanted an apple. Because I craved that crisp, delicious apple. I wanted to acknowledge God for creating the fruit of the tree. So the apple is the means that I should be able to express that. When you ate the apple, you want to eat the apple. But you're not permitted the apple unless you say the blessing. That's the difference between me and you. So don't think when you said that blessing with intent, you're the equivalent of the rabbi. You're not. Now, some people have to be put in their places. They get carried away and we delude ourselves. We think we're more than we are. So again, any mundane act, you could turn that mundane act into a mitzvah, as long as you do it with, with appropriate intent. And that's what it means called masechu l'shem, or your actions, the most mundane action. If you tie your shoes tightly in the morning, so when you walk to shul, you should walk, be able to walk at a more brisk pace. Because if you don't feel like your shoes are falling off your feet. Tying your shoes more tightly is a mitzvah. Tying your shoes more tightly that you shouldn't, your foot shouldn't shift in the shoe to maintain balance, you shouldn't fall. That's a mitzvah. If everything we do is with that intent, even the most mundane act, which seems to be necessary just to function as a regular human being, that's a mitzvah. There was this rabbi, I made the story up. He bought himself a pair of uh, golf shoes. They had cleaves in the bottom. So when he goes out to the green on the golf course, you know, and he puts his feet secure on the ground, it really becomes embedded in the ground. So he takes that swing, it doesn't lose his balance. Because the cleaves are deep into the ground. But this rabbi, he doesn't go to the golf course. He was never to the golf course. It's snowing outside. He doesn't have boots with with ridges. He puts on, he bought a pair of golf shoes at some kind of used clothing store. And he's going to shul with golf shoes. People say, oh, a rabbi, he's really on the know. I wonder which, which, which country club he belongs to. You know? People think, you know, he wears, a, you know, that he's a with it suit. 
you know, sometimes this is very important. Certain people who are great Talmud Chum, they dress meticulously, immaculately, even within style. So somebody beats the rabbi and says, Rabbi, see, you're into style. The rabbi's not into style. Because the rabbi wants to be perceived by others to be accepted and in touch with what they are. That's why he's dressed in that way. Otherwise, when he was in yeshiva, he wore a black suit. It could have been out of style for six years. But now that he's functioning as a role model, and the way he feels he can be the role model is people have to be able to identify with him. So why did he pay that the ex, a few extra hundred dollars for the suit and the shoes and the tie and the shirt? And he has a certain type of haircut, a certain type of beard trim. Why? Again, it's for that same objective. As long as it's for that objective, every aspect of his moment is a mitzvah. And King Solomon said, through his great wit, wisdom, in all your endeavors, you should always know God. You should always be in touch with God. And if you have that in mind, he will set you on that straight path. The Gemara tells us, Talmud tells us, whatever path you want to walk, God will assist you on that path. A person wants to do everything correctly for the sake of God. But you know, there's always, we don't know, we're not always able to fulfill what we want. Our interests, we can't meet those interests. The There's a famous Ovis Reb Nosan, it's from the Talmud. A person, when he dies, even 50% of his aspirations haven't been fulfilled. You know, you want to own the Jets, and you want to own the Yankees, you want to own the this, and you want to have this home. All your aspirations in life, when a person leaves this world, not even 50% of those aspirations are fulfilled. And here he says that if you know God, if you're involved with God in all your ways, even the most mundane ways, God will set you on a straight path. He will assist you to achieve it. Because those are not your endeavors. Those are God's endeavors. When you want to do God's endeavors, God says, you know, we're on the same, we're on the same path. It's like you walk lock arm in arm. He pulls you along. No. You have Air Force One. And the president needs an advisor. He says, why don't you hop on the plane? I need you to advise me exactly what to say and how to say and what not to say. So why are you there? Why do they put you on Air Force One? Right? You're not his vice president, but he needs you because since your intent is to help him, he's there. He'll take you on the jet, on the Air Force One. He'll put you on that rocket to take you out of, out of this atmosphere. Whatever you need, that's King Solomon. Behold your help. As long as you, your intent is to know him in all your endeavors, when you sleep, when you eat, when you cohabit, when you relax, when you vacation, it's only him. That's my only intent. And I don't waste time. He will, he will straighten out and lead you along that, along that straight path.